everybody, this is Joe Carabello. And Patrick. And Heather. Woo! You guys are watching <laughs> the new release Wednesday show, y'all. Yo! Hey, hey, it's the NEW from the NRW. That's right. <laughs> For I'm November 29th. So November 29th, and we're still net neutral, so yes, everyone's and, free. <laughs> and we're here at the Amazing Comic Shop. Books, <laughs> books, 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 books. You got to rep. Whenever you're in the Fairfax, <laughs> Virginia area, and you need a comic book, or if you go to GMU, yeah. shout out to George Mason University. Right there. Right across the street. The, uh, what are they? The Masons? Yes, the Masons. Or the this, Patriots? The, 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 what is the team? The, the, the Masons. I don't remember. <laughs> I, don't remember. I, I went there for like a GMU a students is probably going to come over and kick my ass. What's the secret society? The, Mace, uh, the, that, uh, the Mason society? The, is that what it is? What's that secret society? No, the, no, the America? I, the, oh, the, like the, like the, the stuff that Bush and them were a part of? Like yeah, that, that I, stone, I think I'm, I think I'm, crossbones? Yeah, it's not. It's something Masons? The... Uh, oh, oh, you're talking about the Freemasons? Free yes, Masons. yes. Oh, I'm, I'm yes. Put on the Secret spot. Society. Yeah, Secret, Secret Society. Um, we know you read comic books, so when you need to read the comic book, come over <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we have a whole bunch of right. books about yeah. the Freemasons. Yes. So. so I'm still sort of stuffed from Thanksgiving. Yeah. Man. Even though I feel I like I've been... zero Thanksgiving. You, Zero? Zero? Well, remember, that? she went to overseas. I she went, went to the UK. Yeah, I went, no, guys. So, but you know what's and, really funny? Oh, yeah. Go ahead. You know what's really funny, though? Like, overseas, they have Thanksgiving. Like, they used to joke about how they don't, but yeah. they... I went to, like, the one place that did not have Thanksgiving. What place is this? It's called Spaghetti House. They're, they're like, they're like five or six. Oh my God, it was such good Italian food. It was a this chain. Was on Thanksgiving Day? Yeah, on Thanksgiving Day. Well, I had amazing Italian why food. Why would they have that though? Why I don't they... know. <laughs> they, they have so much Thanksgiving. I, like, we did not want Thanksgiving, and like, everywhere had Thanksgiving. Mm, so. Well, Pasta. Then, that's cool. You found a place. I'm so happy yeah. I found a place. I did not want Thanksgiving. I didn't, I didn't think that like the UK would have to celebrate Thanksgiving. Yeah, they, they, like... they're Black Friday. Well, it's like there was a, there was a whole situation it was not a terrorist plot please don't think but it's like there was a thing where they thought that there was a terrorist situation in one of the biggest shopping areas on black friday they had like an attack thing it was just a whole bunch of guys getting oh, angry right. but uh, it, but like a whole bunch of guys getting it, angry it was it was just i think it was just even two guys um but it was <laughs> i don't even so remember a now. duo a duo um but it's like <laughs> they, they they celebrate thanksgiving even though they don't they call it like the festive holiday stuff and it's like turkey and stuffing and then they have black friday so i don't know they actually have a Black Friday, they have Black Friday in the UK. Yeah. <laughs> Did you guys? Well, obviously you were gone. Did you celebrate Black Friday? Or well, no, you said they said Black they, they do Black Friday there. Yeah, but so I, did you I, take in some shopping? No, I was at like the palace, and I went to like a castle and stuff. I mean, that if I was like, there, I, mean, yeah. Yeah. I was like, did you do I'll, anything Black I'll, Friday? I mean, if, no, but I did uh, the third, like the you know, because now the stores open up like the Thanksgiving night. That's true. And I do that just same. Why would I wake up early? Same. When I can just. Stay late. So you went out Thursday night after eating Thanksgiving dinner and stuff. Yeah, I Did went you... out there, went to went to the Best Buy, stood in that line for about five minutes, and then I was like, I had nothing even to buy. I wasn't even like looking to they buy. Don't good, they don't have good deals anymore. It's like the same stuff that you get like on a normal day. It's and like straight up, like you can go online now. I what? mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, because like at six o'clock, I went on Best Buy instead of dealing with the store. I was yeah. like, I'm going on Best Buy.com. Oh, were you looking? Do you have a goal? There's like a couple of DVDs I was thinking about getting, like the Justice League Dark Blu-ray. Oh, I would. I wanted to get. It was that like too. six ninety nine. I should have. They didn't have online. That. I like, but I like the. I like having like to elbow and push through people. Though. But you don't <laughs> do that anymore because everyone like Amazon literally has Black Friday month. Like they they have the same deals all month, and like I I came back on yeah. Sunday, yeah. and then on Monday I went Black Friday shopping. Like I don't. I, I I enjoy the visual of seeing like all these people like True. carry big ass TVs out. Like <laughs> like that's the biggest TVs. Yeah too. yeah that's what I'm saying. It's like you yeah. know me I'm a filmmaker like those yeah. details are sort of crucial to me. I'm like do you even know why that TV's on sale? It's exactly. Like, it's crap. You don't ever buy. Yeah I've, I've never bought a TV. Yet. But I I enjoy seeing the people like you do. Yeah yeah. Like, I went to Target and Walmart Thursday night. You went to Walmart just to see the the crowds and it was actually that's the worst dead. crowd. I, I really went there like about eight thirty nine o'clock. It was really no crowd. Because it's usually like the six, six o'clock to yeah. eight. That's it. And a couple of the Blu-rays that I wanted for like $4, $6, like Power Rangers. I wanted the Power Rangers. Because because that's how much it's worth. Six. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy the I new Power Rangers. Yeah, 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 six dollars. And I got it for six bucks. So, so I was happy. And I didn't have to deal with the crowd. And then I went over to Target and got the Stranger Things Blu-ray DVD combo for oh, 10 yeah. bucks. And no crowd. It was great. I mean, that's exactly why we go out during that time. I don't know why anyone goes out on Black Friday at all. 
you yeah. know? I mean, True. like, because you can go, because what are, what are families doing at that point? If you think about it, they should go out after they've eaten so they can work it off. Right? I'm saying. It's not. <laughs> but, but guys, as a retailer, it is so unfair for employees. And I'm, that going, is true. I'm, I'm going to stand by yeah. this. I was, um, a, one third of malls that have been open came out with a statement saying they were not going to be open on Thanksgiving. Like, yeah. I am not okay with. Yeah, I, if I was a retailer, I would not want to be employed. So shout out to everybody that yes. was open. And, and that's and why we don't work retail. But we, I admire everyone that does. Those are the yeah. true warriors. <laughs> like, as have, we're in my shop. We <laughs> should, you know, they have Labor Day and President's Day. They should have like Retailer's Day or something like that. Well, let's keep Do it on the that? same no, note. No, they don't. Because no, no. Saturday is Small Business Saturday. So that's shout true. out to those small business out there and comic book shops where everybody's coming to hopefully partake do you know if they did good i know you weren't here i was yeah i was not here um yeah. usually most people don't know about small small business saturday and it's really unfortunate we gotta put the word out there like black friday about well, small business but that's saturday. It's, it's it's supposed to be so that's an american express thing so if you have an american express you you have heard of it because amex wants them to go out and get it but um unfortunately no it's a small business saturday and it's actually a, an event that we do with the comic community and mm. It, it brings in a couple more people, but the Saturday after Thanksgiving, you're supposed to go sh eat at a place that's, you know, homemade, that's small. You yeah. want to put that money back into the community, but... It's our... Crossing fingers. Hopefully we better. keep on pushing it, but I think people will slowly gradually it'll, it'll do better. It'll Just do better. like... Uh, I was amazed, actually, with this Black Friday. Again, I usually will go online now, and I was a little hesitant to go to Target and Walmart at 8.30. I was expecting massive crowds. Yeah. And there wasn't. It's perfect. So I think people are learning and they're transitioning now. Yeah, where they're yeah. shopping faster. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and also like Small Business Saturday. That's also like for people like for like me who has their own their own oh, company. Yeah, yeah. People can you know hire me, which that's or they can book me on that day. But I wasn't given a discount. <laughs> 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 was, but that's that is for also like yeah, small businesses, exactly. not just retail, but also like people and stuff like that. So well, again, we're going on that creative tip because I saw a couple of illustrator friends that gave like, exactly. discounts oh, yeah. for yeah. like commission work artists. Exactly. So yeah. Because, yeah, you know, artists, they are their own business, too. So so speaking of which, before we go into the rest of our episode, we got a lot of cool stuff coming at you. Um, we have some interviews from Baltimore Comic Con I'm going to throw up on this episode. I'm not going to give it to you. I'm just going to let it pop up and you're going to see who it is. As well as our picks and our rundown segment for what happened this week. There's a lot of stuff going on, but it also we're also trying to chill out a little bit the holidays and, you know, get us home because we want to give you content, but at the same time, we need our time. And on that note, speaking of creatives... Um, my friend Matthew Dow Smith reached out to me. He was the Love artist. Matt. Matt, shout out to Matthew, local DC representative. Um, he, uh, you know, for work on X Files. Um, what else did he do? He was on one of those Doctor books. Uh, he's, 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 he I, I think he's done some Doctor Who. But he, he you, um, if you are Batman fans, you'll know him from Batman sixty six. Yes, did some great work on the on those books. Uh, he's awesome. And he also um, he did the covers. If you were reading, uh, oh my goodness, uh, Gods and Monsters. Yes. If you did not read that miniseries. Do it, but uh, Matt did some great colors on that on that book. Well, Matthew, we love you, and he reached out to me. He has a Kickstarter campaign for a new book he's doing with Ron Mars and Paul Harding. Uh, who doesn't know Ron Mars uh, and Paul Harding, who is a great sculptor and works in the comic book business as well. Um, they have a book called, uh, let me grab it real quick. What is the name of the book? Beasts of the Black Hand uh, that they're going to do with Ominous Press, and, as well as, I think, IDW. But to get it going, they need you to fund their Kickstarter. So here's their Kickstarter video right after this. Check it out. Please show them support. Um, I think they've already reached their, it's, it is going to happen. So now we're trying to reach those uh, bonus goals. <laughs> yeah, I, th I, th I, thought yeah. I, I thought I saw it on Twitter. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. So check it out. So congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> but congratulations. Matthew was like, we really want to reach these goals. So throw up this Kickstarter video. And so, hey, Matthew's a good guy. And we're going to throw it up to you guys right now. So check it out. My name is Paul Harding. I'm a sculptor by trade working for DC Collectibles, Gentle Giant, Sideshow, and many others. You've probably seen my statues and action figures, but I'm also a traditional two-dimensional artist, as well as a storyteller. I came up with a story I knew I had to tell, a diesel punk horror adventure set in the early 20th century called Beasts of the Black Hand. Beasts of the Black Hand begins with the assassination of the Mad Monk Rasputin by MI6 agent Oswald Rayner, an actual historical figure and the hero of our story. Rasputin's death sets into motion a chain of events that leads to the Versailles Peace Conference of 1919. But the Europe of Beasts of the Black Hand is different from the one we know. 
a Europe threatened by supernatural forces with rumors of fearsome monsters rampaging in the East. Now, Oswald Rayner faces Rasputin's daughter, Maria, with the soul of Europe at stake. Acclaimed illustrator Matthew Dow Smith, who just finished a seminal run on the X-Files comic series, is our artist. Ron Mars has been a writer in the comics industry for more than two decades, with storied runs on Green Lantern, Silver Surfer, Witchblade, and many others. Hi, I'm Ron Mars, writer of Beasts of the Black Hand. I'm really excited to be working on this project, especially the chance to collaborate with friends like Paul Harding, Matthew Dow Smith, and Naraj Manan. Beasts of the Black Hand is a tale equal parts horror and adventure, set in a Europe where the shadows are a little darker and the technology is a little more exotic. I hope you'll join us in bringing this world to life as we create a beautiful, oversized graphic novel. Beasts of the Black Hand will be 64 full-color pages. Pledge levels include a digital version, the oversized hardcover version, variant covers by a range of superstar artists, sculptural rewards, and more. With a successful Kickstarter, we expect to print and ship Beasts of the Black Hand in early 2018 in collaboration with Ominous Press. Thank you for your time and consideration. With your help, we can unleash the beasts. Okay. Hi guys, I'm Heather. Um, here are my picks for the week. Uh, first one is John Wick number one. Um, if you are a fan of the movies like I am, um, I am so excited for number three. Oh my god, I don't know about y'all. But um, num uh, John Wick is supposed to be a five-part miniseries. Um, it's going to be about his origin, like how he became the assassin that he is now. Um, or that he was because technically he's not anymore. Um, so, no, spoiler, sorry. <laughs> um, uh, so the story uh, starts out right in, uh, immediately after he gets uh, comes out of prison for uh, for a reason that we don't know yet, um, and it's right before uh, right before he gets the assassin's kind of law book. Um, it's by Greg Pak and Giovanni Valletta. I'm probably completely destroying his name. I do suggest that it's the first of five. Uh, pick it up. It's in stores. Uh, it's in stores Wednesday. Um, the second one is Mystic You from DC Comics by Alyssa Quitney, Quit, Quitney, Quitney, and uh, Mike Norton. They uh, so it's a it's a kind of a Zatanna story, kind of not. Uh, it's about a young Zatanna. She kind of loses her way, um, and she enrolls in the school that specializes in magic users. Um, I, I don't want to give too much away, but uh, it's it's really cute. It is for a DC comic. It is supposed to be a um, YA book, so um, kids that are between the age uh, that are as young as like 12, 11, 12 can definitely pick up the book. Um, it's really cute. It's just about how the superheroes um, or and or potential supervillains um, learn how to control their magic, and it's really really cool. Um, the last one is also a DC book. It's a Batman Annual number two. I've been really excited for this story. It's with uh, the guys who did Elmer Fudd. And if you did not read the Elmer Fudd issue, oh my gosh, you're missing out on like one of the best issues of the year. DC's Elmer Fudd um, and Batman was just amazing. Um, so Tom King and Lee Weeks bring a story of Catwoman. It's literally Batman and Catwoman's first date. And it's so cute. But it also brings up all that long history. So it's not just Catwoman and Batman falling in love, it's them falling in and out of love. And it's really cute and I do suggest you pick it up. So those are my picks for the week. Yay! Hi, this is Ramon Gill, a writer of Sci-Fi, Centuries, The Hard Code, and Men from DARPA. And you're watching the new release Wednesday show. What's going on world? It's your boy Patrick Michael Strange and I am here at Baltimore Comic Con 2017. This is the new release Wednesday show. And as y'all know, with my work with the Nerds of Color, I'm all about showing love to my fellow Asian com uh, creators out there in the industry, especially my funky Filipinos like this man right here. This is Ramon Gill, we were Facebook friends and then, um, but I never met you in person yet, so now it's finally a pleasure to meet you, sir. <laughs> so. I want to know all about your work. I've heard so much about it from my friends on the Nerds of Color. Let's let uh, our fans know on the new release Wednesday show some of the projects you have coming up. Sure. Um, most of my stuff are going to be science fiction. Maybe we mix it in a lot of espionage. And but I also try to make them funny. Okay. So most of my stuff are you're going to find there's a lot of some humor injected in there, especially a lot of snappy dialogue. I'm a big Aaron Sorkin fan. Okay. So it kind of inspired you for yeah. It inspired me and. Um, 
And as I was just saying earlier, which I don't really promote because that's not what it's, it's, it's my secret agenda. <laughs> My secret agenda. You want people to be noticed for the content of their character, but then there's a secret little right, thing in there. Right. The content okay. of the character gets everybody. Right. I don't sell it as such, but if you look at all my books, all the lead characters are Asian. You know, they're either Chinese, Japanese, Filipino, yes. or whatever. Yes. You know? So the hard code, the, um, the, um, the lead character is Filipino and Asian, and she's an android, so I don't know how that plays. Oh, wow. Okay. She looks like an Asian, but she's Android, so I don't know. Kind of like Ghost in the Shell a little bit. But her partner is Filipino. Oh. Um, the Centuries, uh, she's Japanese. We're going to throw that on the screen as yeah. he's talking. We're going to throw these images up so you can see what we're talking um, about. And then Men from DARPA, the, the, the leader of the group is Chinese. Nice. And, um, and let's see. And yeah. So let's talk about uh, some of the synopses of some of the titles. So Men of DARPA, what's that all about? Men from DARPA is a bunch of geeky scientists. Mm -hmm. They're great. I DARPA mean, is defense. Defense uh, administ uh, defense agency research something research project. Yeah, it's agency. slipping me right now. We're gonna put through that oh, acronym I'm sorry, right it's now. Department of Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. There we go. I think that's it. something like that. <laughs> and they're basically the R and D wing for the intelligence and military. Yes, research and development. I got that one. <laughs> and so these guys who are working there, they keep finding themselves into these in these adventures, okay. or getting caught up with espionage, even though they don't want to be in it. Yeah. So they have to use their science wits, sort of like kind of a little bit X Files ish, government conspiracies, yeah. maybe some aliens. Um, no aliens yet, okay. but <laughs> one of them has time travel. I like that. I like some Back to the Future um, type stuff. One there. of them has a nuclear bomb. Uh, the first one had an, had a girlfriend, ex girlfriend. <laughs> Something that they're not used to. Okay. No friends. So maybe ma correct the mistakes he made as a as a, a boyfriend to get her back. Or? No, she turned out to be a spy. Oh. So they have to go after her because she stole something. There we go. Some little insight on that In one. The second one, um, a friend of theirs, who's a fellow nerd, gets kidnapped because he's got he invented um, cold fusion. So, yes. And so they're worried that whoever kidnapped him is going to use cold fusion. You know, for, for evil. For malicious intent. And then on the third book, um, uh -huh. um, their Secret Service guy who's there to protect them um, uses one of a time machine to go back in time and change history. Okay. And so they have to go back and stop them. And it's an interesting paradox because because when uh, when the time changes. When, when they, they realize that time has changed because all of a sudden they're living in the United Soviet States of America. Okay. So they have to go back Interesting, yeah. Correct. Yeah. And then uh, we have some of the other titles Centuries as well. over there is um, about um, this Japanese-American test pilot for the Air Force. Uh -huh. Her father was uh, one of the guys who died on the Challenger shuttle. Wow, yeah, and I remember she, that. And then she, she sees him, you know? And she Why are you here? She digs up she digs up and she discovers that there's like some top secret project that her father's involved in. Mm. It has to do with protecting the earth from space. Yeah. So and then it, a lot of things play historical events play into it, like the blackout of two thousand three, the, um, the Iraqi war. Yeah. Um, uh, Oh, and uh, the Mayan and the Aztecs and Amelia Earhart. Uh, I love stuff. I'm a big history buff, guy, so, so that stuff will grab so me. This story goes yeah. all into that and it leaves everything into this one storyline. The Mayan Civilization. The Gulf War. The 1986 Space Shuttle Challenger Disaster. The 2003 Northeast Blackout. Do you know the whole truth behind these and other historical events? Centuries tells the tale of Alex Ozuka and her secret role in history. From ancient civilizations to NASA to the White House, experience the adventure that has been centuries in the making. Written by Ramon Gill, creator of The Hard Code, The Men from DARPA, and The Sci-Fi's Anthologies. Along with Ian Warrianto on art, color by Macarena Cortez, and Mikiko Panjak and Kevin Stone on cover. Edited by Marta Tanrikulu. Don't miss out on the sci-fi adventure for all time. Awesome. And then the other one, the last one.
last one is um, the hard code. Basically, it's uh, 200 years from now. Androids are are, cit are full citizens. Okay. But they're second second class citizens because they they they're all subservient. By, their, by nature of their programming, they're all subservient to humans. Okay. So the human society has treats them like second class citizens. Awesome. And then when, when they start losing their hard code, it starts disappearing, they start rebelling. And so there's a lot of tension that builds up. Uh -huh. And so our heroes, Drake and Garcia, an android and the human are police officers. And they have to figure out why the hard, everybody's programming is changing. And so that'll be an interesting relationship. And that's a, because of what's going on, the relationship between a human and a Not robot. just that, they're having an affair. So now, so they're having an affair and, and, and androids and humans are, be, are, are about to you know, have a war. Some really crazy deep stuff there. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> like I said, like almost all the lead characters are. Yeah. Really I, I gotta tell Keith love. about that. I never actually told Keith that. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. All, the, all these people are. are Keith, I'm, I'm gonna throw this at you. Hey, we gotta, you know, maybe bring. Where are you from? Are you in this area? Yes, in New York. New York? Okay. When we head up to New York, are you gonna be at New York Comic Con? Just Thursday and Friday. Okay. That's um, every year it falls on my wedding anniversary. And so this is the first year we're actually gonna go away on our anniversary. All the other years, I tell my, I beg my wife, yeah. can we go away next weekend? And I said, but this year I figured, you know what, I yeah. should go away with her. Yes, definitely, much like you, my wife, you gotta balance the, what you enjoy also with the person you love, because she makes everything Well, will you happen. be there Thursday and Friday? I will be there, we'll have to link up. Well, let me know on Facebook. Definitely. We'll hit you up, each other up. Why don't we uh, throw the URLs out there, some of the social networking stuff you have so they can locate some of these copies because I know they want to read it like I want to read it. It's just Ramon Gill, R-A-M-O-N-G-I-L. Dot com. If you, gonna, do a, if you do a Google search. Okay. There. Okay. So Google search, yeah. it'll, it'll come up. Yeah, I'm going to throw it across the screen right now. You're going to see that. Ramon? And I'll send you some screenshots. I would love that. It's a pleasure meeting you. Ramon Gill, everyone. This is Baltimore Com Comic Con 2017. I'm Patrick Michael Strange, and you are watching the new release Wednesday show. Hey, everybody. This is Joe Carabeo with the new release Wednesday for the week of November 29th. And you guys know me. I don't lie. I'm the most honest person that you will ever, ever, ever meet. And that's why every single time I'm on this show... I try to bring you the value. I try to bring you the best books that you probably have never even seen or heard of but that you must, you must read. So, my three picks. Number one, Kill or Be Killed, number 14. I've been having a blast with this book for the past, I guess, 14, 14 issues, or probably 13 issues. Kill or Be Killed is pretty much a story about a guy who's being haunted by a demon and he must kill so this demon will not kill him. Pretty simple, pretty amazing, pretty amazing. Ed Brubaker, Sean Murphy. I think this is probably one of those books that's gonna dig deep within you. It's bloody, it's gory, it's crime, it's noir. It's all the stuff that I love, and maybe you'll love it too. So check that out, Killer Be Killed, number 14. I hope I got those names right, but if I'm not, if I, if I mess it up, I always mess up all the names. Patrick back there, throw up the right names. Boom! Number two. Motor Crush, number eight. Babstar. Cameron Stewart. That's all I gotta say. Babstar, Cameron Stewart. That's the team from Batgirl. That's the team from Batgirl. What? For the new 52 Batgirl. They've been making this amazing, amazing story. I think it takes place in the future. Does someone does it take place in the future? No. No, does but it it's take dope, place though. in present time. It's, it's, dope. Dope. it's a little bit. It's uh, they're, a little they're bit. Doing, they're doing one of little these. Bit. They're doing one of these. One of these things with the timelines. Motor crush, you know, racing, awesome girls, a little bit of crime, a little bit of future, lots of neon, but still, those two names will sell this book alone. Yes, sir. Are you, are you counting off? I love that. <laughs> no, no. I love that. Bad star, Cameron Stewart, throw money at them, anything they do. And all you, everyone who knows me knows that my life is Grant Morrison, 2,000 million percent. What? And I was just told that they're re-releasing or bringing it out again, Invisible Straight Paperback, book two. Now, the only reason why I'm saying this at all is just for you guys to just go out there and read The Invisibles. If you have not read this book, if you have not even stepped foot into the world of The Invisibles, you have a choice. You have a choice. You can either take one pill 
to live in the normal world or we can take another pill and live in this amazing invisible world where things you've never seen will happen you know what it sounds like the matrix because guess what the matrix stole i'm sorry <laughs> Guess what? Yes, they did steal that idea or they borrowed that idea from the Invisibles. But Grant Morrison is cool with that. But if you want to see that idea taken a million times further in your mind, in your mind's eye, check out Invisibles. Trade paperback number two came out, but the whole entire whole entire series is already out. But just go, go there, go there, just go there. My name's Joe Carabello. A straight productions, filmmaker, photographer, writer, podcaster, whatever you want to call me. Killer Be Killed, Motor Crush, Invisibles. We're out. Hey, this is Dave Newbold. I'm an artist for Ice Kingdom's role playing game and also the comic Spellbound. It's a shout out for the new release Wednesday show. What's going on, y'all? This is Patrick Michael Strange, the new release Wednesday show. We're here at Baltimore Comic Con 2017. And as I was walking the artist alley, uh, I came across a friend of mine. If y'all know me from Temple Forest Entertainment, you know, which also is the branding of this show, the behind the scenes stuff, there was uh, Temple Studios and there was Far East Productions. Temple Studios is where it kind of first kicked off. And this guy here was a part of it. This is, this is a reunion of sorts. Um, we did a book called Gloom together. That was his property. Um, we did, uh, what did we do? Time Dollars, which was kind of what really sparked everything for me and got me kind of known all over. And I'm so thankful for this guy, but it's a reunion of sorts. And shout out to my man, David Newbold in the house, brother. What's up? <laughs> Baltimore native. Here at Baltimore Comic Con, I think this is where we first met. Was at a Baltimore Comic Con yeah, show, so right? The first one, like or the yeah. second one, when we went in a hotel. At the hotel, that's right. yeah. In Townsend. And I was doing the book Blood Monks with Jerry. That's right. And Blood of Monks. You, were you penciling at the time, or were you going to the Kubrick School at the time? Uh, I just gotten out, and I was starting to. I was actually inking backgrounds at that time. Yeah. I was inking backgrounds for Daredevil. Yeah. And he was doing a book called uh, Runaways. Yeah. Yeah, and, that, that uh, came later, yeah. It came later. Oh, you did the Weapon X book, I want to say. Yep. It was like one shot. Yeah, there was some, uh, I did Deadpool before that. Yeah. This is some dope stuff. His pencils, his line work. He, he's a Kubert School graduate, y'all. You know, they, they they make him good out of the Kubert School. Class <laughs> of 2001. There you go. So, yeah, David Newbold, man. Awesome stuff. Noobs is in the house. And we were talking. He has a new project that we want to discuss. It, it looks awesome. Why, why don't you talk about it, brother? This is the art of the Ice Kingdoms, which features uh, art from the role-playing game Ice Kingdom. And... Uh, I, I got a feature in here in the beginning. It's got a lot of the art from the uh, actual game. And I've been working on this the last year. They just released the book, uh, this show. So it's brand new, bought off the press. And uh, you throw that image up right now. Boom. Bam. And you can see the big banner behind me. It's got some of the art. It has a good bit of the stuff that I did. It doesn't have all of them, but it's got a good bit of the stuff. And totally in your lane, if you were fans of Gloom, yeah, this is, is that in my whole wheelhouse. fantasy. Yeah, this is wheelhouse. Yeah, it's it's uh, really traditional Vikings. It takes place in a Nordic setting, and it's expansion uh, from the earlier games that uh, that they've produced. Are you a gamer? Uh, I don't think we've ever talked about like other stuff outside. I'm of comics. not as hardcore gaming as it might seem because I'm doing this. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you're into I've that kind of Yeah, stuff. I've definitely played, played some games and done. As right, long as I've known you, that's that. your wheelhouse, your style, that fantasy element. That's what yeah, you yeah, that's, that's really what I like. And uh, my my new uh, book, Spellbound. Um, yeah, Spellbound is, coming out soon. Uh, Arcanum. Uh, uh, it's, it's going to be Alterna. Alterna. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Alterna. They follow the show and actually uh, give us a lot of stuff. So, uh, shout out to Alterna. So, actually, I'll probably already see it from Peter. Shout out to Peter Semetti with Alterna. Good stuff. Right on. Yeah. yeah so, uh, you know, we're working on that now, and it's going to be five issues. Okay. And it's, I think it's going to be released in, not next year. Okay. Or maybe into next year, 2018, early 2019. You're currently working on the first issue right now? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So uh, they want to get like all the issues done before the release? Yeah, we're going to have a little buffer there to make sure you know, there's no hiccups in scheduling. So Especially with an independent. Yeah, probably won't even really start <laughs> Okay. Probably next Baltimore Comic Con will have it here. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's what I'm working on behind okay. this stuff. But, but right now... <laughs>
<laughs> this is this is, this is the what art is of the ice kingdoms. <laughs> this is available now. Yeah, check it out. So, uh, dude, I wanted to ask you because it's been so long, man, since we chatted. Runaways was kind of like, uh, and I have to thank you immensely for this. When you got oh, on Runaways that? with Adrian Alfano, yeah. Brian Kavon, one of the best titles that came out during that, like that real quick push that they Marvel did for a little bit, and you gave us a shout out. The Temple Studios logo was up there on um, Nico Minoru's yeah, on one of the doors. Or right? Yeah, yeah, yeah you, I, I appreciated that, man. That yeah. art is still on my wall. Yeah, that's one of those uh, like hidden Easter eggs yeah. that uh, you know. Like and it meant a, I can't tell you like as friends and you know comic creators and him, him knowing I was a Marvel fan, it meant a lot to me. And her being Asian and you know I'm, I'm very, I love my Asianness and being Filipino, it just is awesome. But I wanted to ask you because uh, now with them making a TV show out of it, brother, TV how do you show. feel about that? that and having great. been one of the original creators working that on that, have you seen some of that stuff? Scene. I have not seen anything from it. I, you know, I keep oh, hearing dude. things about it, but yeah. I haven't seen, I haven't seen anything from it. They look, they definitely cast, it's exciting. They cast it well. Um, I just hope they do it justice. Yeah. You know, it, but I, and I hope they keep some of those nuances from the down to those fine details. Like I know they don't have a sticker. <laughs> no. You know, yeah. like those those Easter eggs we talked about. But it'll be cool to see what they do and making you know because a lot of uh, like with Frank Miller's the 300 stuff, how they try to recreate some of the panels. Sure. In the in the uh, film or show. Yeah, it's whatever. always interesting to see that transition from free yeah. medium into. And, being a fan of the series and, and you and I with, with that connection with my connection through you living vicariously through you I, I like I'm so looking forward to it dude. yeah that should be awesome yeah so Runaways check that out when it drops but no affiliation but my man had a large part in it Adrian Alfani you look good because of my brother <laughs> noobs took care of you um, but yeah, so any other outside stuff besides uh, Spellbound with Alternative Comics is coming out. We have the Art of the Ice Kingdoms. Um, for anybody that wants to uh, get with you online and get some copies of Gloom, I know you're still working on Gloom. Yeah, you can always find me at davidnewbold.com or hit me up on Facebook. Instagram is dnewbold8, same with Twitter, Tumblr, pretty much everything is dnewbold8. We're going to throw that right here as we say seen it right now shoot him a follow a like subscribe share this is my brother right here it's awesome it means a lot david newbold patrick michael strange temple studios reunion right here shout out to jerry david shout dan everybody right. nick what's up nick you out in la um a lot of love this is the new release wednesday show baltimore comic-con 2017. Alright guys, this is Patrick and these are my picks for your NRW of November 29th, 2017. Got some cool ones for you. Um, first up, I have Giant Killers number zero from IDW Publishing. Um, it's being uh, done by Bart Sears, Ron Mars, Tom Rainey, uh, Jambiri, and Menon from Ominous Press, uh, their input, their imprint with under IDW. Uh, this is all to lead up to Giant Killers number one. Um, in this particular issue, you're going to have two short stories, which talks about some of the characters within this universe. Um, I know for one, Archon, the giant killer, is going to be protecting Aro, R O U A R O U. I think is the characters. I'm, I'm messing up there. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Um, who will eventually lead the rebellion against the evil bad guy in that? So really cool, uh, great combination. And if y'all remember from tuning into our YouTube channel, I did an interview with. Uh, Bart Sears and Andy Smith and the whole Ominous Press line of books that they have um, because I'm a big fan of Bart. Um, if you also recall from that, um, as a kid, I was a huge fan of Wizard Magazine and in Wizard Magazine, Bart would uh, drop this awesome Brutes and Babes, um, how to draw type uh, piece in that book, which taught me a lot of, of how to draw uh, and all of that. So it was really cool to see him come back and because throughout that, those how to draws, he kind of had this one brute character, which was the brute and the babe character that he would then eventually uh, be the seeds to his whole ominous press imprint that he, you know, was off and on getting started. And, but now it's back and I'm so excited. And Giant Killer number zeros will precede the Giant Killer uh, number one that we'll get eventually from Ominous and IDW Publishing. So check it out and also go check out our interview that's on our YouTube page. And remember to subscribe, people. So good stuff. Two great stories in there from Bart and Ron Mars. Next up, I have Aquaman Annual Number One. If you recall watching last week's episode where we talked about Justice League, I am uh, was a little bit head over heels. I'm not ashamed to admit it. Over Jason Momoa, uh, that brother, Aqua Bro, 
is a good looking man. You know, I'll give him his props. And <laughs> as me all Aquaman is delicious, looking for some more Aquaman to feed that need. And uh, Aquaman Annual Number One gives us an amazing story with Aquaman and Mira in, uh, I think it's like a future story in Crown Spire, I think is the new place that, uh, the, the new Atlantis, I think that they've set up. And we are introduced to a young Tom Curry, uh, which is very interesting. You know, Arthur Curry is Aquaman's real name. So I think that uh, Aquaman and Mira had a son who were learning in this kind of like futuristic story. And we also see a future Superman and a Wonder Woman coming to visit. I haven't read it all yet. I've only seen a little bit of the pages, but I'm really excited to check this out and how this feeds into the whole overarching universe that uh, DC's doing because they have a lot of interesting things going on with this whole Doomsday Clock and everything they're doing. It's a very exciting time in DC. I haven't been this excited about DC stuff in a while, so I love what they're doing. So I'm really interested in checking this one out and uh, reading it. For my top pick I have this week, this actually became my pick right before this episode um, <laughs> because uh, all my other people on the squad on the show this week have, are picking some great books. And so I was very happy to bring this one as a pick because I, I wanted to get noticed. And it's a, a comic that is very beloved by me because it was one of the first titles I picked up as a kid. Actually, the first comic book that I picked up regularly as a kid, G.I. Joe. And if you all know me as well, I'm also Tunnel Rat for the Finest, the G.I. Joe Costumers Club. So, yay! I get to pick a G.I. Joe book and put it in here. Um, Snake Eyes is one of my favorite comic book characters, and he is one of the most amazing characters in the G.I. Joe universe. Um, they recently killed him. He's passed away. But in this particular issue, um, there's a new Snake Eyes, a female Snake Eyes, that has taken over the mantle. And apparently, from what I understand, she's been implanted with the memories of the deceased Snake Eyes. And so they're doing this whole cool rollout uh, it's called the Dawn of the Arshkagi, the Arshkagi being the ninja clan that Snake Eyes was a part of. So I'm really excited on how this is all going to go down. And this character being female is super cool. I didn't know that they kind of gave her the new Snake Eyes mantle. So gets me excited to kind of introduce my daughter now to the franchise. And with her being a female, kind of, you know, kind of cool. The guy and now the girl leading the charge. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait to check it out. So G.I.J.O. number 246 is out. Check that out. That's my top pick as well as Aquaman Annual number one and Giant Killers number zero, y'all. Those are my picks. Yes, all right, guys, we are done with that episode. I hope you enjoyed our picks. We hope you all check them out and you come out here to the amazing comic shop to pick them up. Cool stuff. And uh, if you want some more interviews, um, just head over to our YouTube page. Please subscribe, y'all. We want to show that people are checking us out. That way we can hopefully get um, sponsors. That would be nice. We would like to be outfitted with some of your cool gear so we can help do that. You know, we're trying to do what we can. And we want to do more fun stuff. And without sponsors, then, you know, we can't. And I only have so far pockets. Not like this guy who's buying, like, expensive cameras and stuff like that. But I ain't going to go there with that and put him on on blast. So I want to be like him when he's It's a tax right off. That's true. You can't write it off. <laughs> that's, that's what you do. I'm just jelly what right now. It's almost December. Oh, you need to spend money to get that right off. That's the that's the key. Is that what you did? That's what it is, right? That's what you do. I don't know. I don't know what else. Well, hey, I can't. Technically, I can write I'm, off movie tickets, so like, I'm totally okay he's like with that. Like man, he has all the magical toys, and I'm jealous of his utility belt right that's now. That's right. JoeCarbale.com. <laughs> Like the 15th yeah, time he said right. that today. <laughs> All right, so because he has such a fancy camera, you'll be wanting to check out DVDs. <laughs> um, so soon, until his DVD drops with his cool project, hopefully starring me, um, you can check I out. I do have DVDs already. That is true. Go to JoeCarbale.com. JoeCarbale.com <laughs> slash films. <laughs> All right, guys. Here's your rundown wow. for the week. Heather's in one of them. Heather, oh. I, I didn't know about that. She's, say, pro she's probably not. She's I, was probably like, not. I was like, I am? I, <laughs> I didn't sign this contract. <laughs> what? Oh, man. So, uh, Logan Lucky is out on DVD, Blu-ray, digital copy. Uh, um, I didn't see it, but I heard a lot about it. Are y'all familiar with Logan Lucky? I wanted to see it so bad. Did you see it? I did not get to see it. I, I wanted to see it so bad. Oh, God. Do you know about it? <laughs> oh, I God. It. I wanted to see it. No, it's, I didn't see it. It's, it. it's about two it. down-on-their-luck brothers, Channing Tatum and Adam Driver, fed up by their Great dismal team. economic prospects. They plot an elaborate heist at the Charlotte Motor Speedway in North Carolina, and they hired uh, James Bond, Daniel Craig, to help them do that. Features Seth MacFarlane, uh, Katie Holmes, Hillary Swank, 
and it's directed by Steven Soderbergh, who is amazing. Steven Soderbergh. This was is after awesome. four years uh, chilling. That's another. Back. That's another guy who just he does everything. He literally yeah. does. He shoots, edits, directs. I love Steven lights. Soderbergh. He's, he's the DP too. He does. Yeah. He's one of the. He's one of the Sundance kids. He started the. In, well, he wanted people that started the indie revolution. So. Yeah, I heard of the two. The two films you should have seen this year, that most people didn't see this year, was Baby Driver. Great you should film, see. Oh my God, it's so good. And Logan Lucky. People did see it though. It did reach over 100 million. So that's for an Logan, indie oh, film. Logan that's Lucky pretty, did get a good. No, no, uh, Baby Driver. Oh, Baby, Baby Driver. Okay. Oh okay. yeah. You need to see it. It's a great <laughs> movie so, of the year. Also out on Blu-ray DVD as well. You need, if you if you don't even see it, just get the freaking album. It yeah. is so good. Yes. The album makes the movie. It's yeah. so good. I would I would second get the out al- if you get the album, then watch it. It's even a million times better. It's so good. <laughs> Making a movie night, go pick up Baby Driver and Logan Lucky, because that looks like a dope movie. I want to check that one out. Um again yeah, there's Adam a driver. Adam Driver's awesome. Yeah. I'm a oh, big supporter of that too. Uh, AKA Kylo Ren for those who just watch the popular stuff. Adam Driver is an amazing. Or actor. Adam from Girls. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I know him. Keep, keep did you watch, did you watch Girls? Did you watch Girls? Are you thinking because I'm a girl I haven't watched Girls? Is yeah. That, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna lie. That's my gimmick on this show. I cannot lie. So you ask me a question, I gotta tell you the truth. <laughs> no, I did not. I have been told many good things about Girls, but I have never actually. Really? Taken the what time what out good watch things it. did you hear about Girls? I just, I just heard that they're like. They're like, the, it's good. <laughs> that's kind of it. Um, I, I've heard that the banter is really, that's really what you want to watch. Yeah. It's, it's got really good banter. If There's you, a wit to it. If you, like, that's the first time I was ever, like, you know, that I ever knew, like, Adam Driver was from Girls. Oh, that's the way you introduced him? That's, like, the first introduction. And yeah. then the way you're introduced to him, like, you won't, you will never see him, like, as Kylo Ren. You will just not see oh, him really? as Kylo <laughs> Ren. Like, from everything he did in that show, you'll just, it'll, it just doesn't work. Yeah. I saw in a bunch of other indie, like, Films and stuff. The stuff before that. Besides, I've never seen girls. He didn't. He was in the military like, too, wasn't he? No, I don't think so. I, I think he was. I would I be shocked. Is he really young? I thought he yeah. was like really super young. But he plays like, like kind of like stonerish characters. Think, he seems like a cool guy to hang out I think with. You need to Wikipedia that. I think he I, served a little bit. You know what? Bit. I will check that out. But he was in. Yeah. He was also in Scorsese's Silence, which is amazing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's a deep cut. Oh, yeah. it just came out. Wow. Last year. Okay. But whatever. Okay, yeah. yeah but whatever. <laughs> but, whatever. Whatever. Like, whatever. Whatever. but again, there's, well, there's not a lot of films coming out on DVD this week no, because no. it is the holidays. They've already kind of really did their push already. So, But Lo- Logan Lucky is a great film. Check that out. Wait, Dunkirk is coming out soon though, right? Coming soon, but not this not, week. Oh, not on my week. Maybe, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, because they like, do no. rotate between here and Pan there's different teams. So hopefully, so you can really talk the hell out so of we missed, we missed the spot. We, we couldn't give our ju- uh, Justice League review because they already did it Well, last we time. can do that. We can add that did again. Yeah, I've that seen in there. I've only been back in the country for 48 hours. What? That's a long well, time. Well, wait till we get to the theater segment when I get to that part. Okay. So as well as out, and it's right after this, uh, Trolls Holiday is out on DVD. <laughs> it, so it aired funny. on the TV, the tube. I saw a brief little snippet of it. Um, you didn't like the original Trolls movie? I thought it was boring. It was... It had JT on there. I don't care. Justin Timberlake. Anna Kendrick. I love the both I'm of them. I'm not saying Those the aren't casting. reasons to watch. They're America's <laughs> sweethearts. <Yeah. laughs> Anna Kendrick. Anna Kendrick's adorable. Anna Kendrick I love her. Adorable. I love her. Um, her book is fantastic. Have you read it? I haven't read it yet. It's so funny. Yeah? Um, But it's... Uh, the JT. I, it's not that I don't love... The cast was actually pretty yeah. good. It was just... Everybody was came good. back for the holidays. Was it actually, yeah. was it actually boring? Because it's like... I, of... I, I didn't. I guess it was boring for me because I was not the right mentality for it. Like I'm not the person that they like set up them. It's who is off... the kids? It's, it's, it is. My little it's, girl loved it. It's not one of those movies that's made for adults and kids. It yeah, was made. For it was kids. really more so to kids. So there was yeah. just like a lot of like kiddie stuff that just like there's like I'm um, over this. Yeah, it was. Yeah, there's I... a transition that. So if you were a little kid, better. well then how come Patrick liked it? I thought it was no. I just thought it was okay. okay. It was maybe Patrick's degrees. Still there. I, I feel what you're saying on that. It's, it's, it's my daughter. My, loved it. I never said it was bad. It just was yeah. not my thing, yeah. like at all. I love the. What I did enjoy was the soundtrack because I'm a big Justin Timberlake fan, and I like Anna Kendrick. So the the musical numbers I enjoy. But is this the Justin Timberlake of? Is this like the like the kid? Pop the yeah. Justin Timberlake yeah. stuff as opposed to like he he, he wrote the music like he yeah. actually wrote yeah. the music for this so yeah. or, or like half the album like he, yeah. he wrote it he like, did a good job of it so it's, I think it, it was the music director of yeah it was something, but it's like it was that. he he put his heart and soul into it. it's just it was not made yeah it wasn't a Disney film made for everybody it was it was a dream DreamWorks right yeah I don't know I don't know off offhand it's probably Disney 
straight. straight. No, it's not Disney. 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 Well, did you say it's Disney? No, it's, it's, it's not like it wasn't like Frozen where you know you have these adult things that Dream are Works? hidden. Maybe DreamWorks. <laughs> it's um, one of those. It was videos. boring. She said it was boring. It was, don't it even was try. Boring but, to me. Do not your kids might like yeah. it. But this is the holiday special, so it was more so holiday music and JT doing holiday music as, as well as Anna Kendrick and my wife and I checked it out a little bit. Even though our daughter was out of the house with with my, with my mother in law, um, we kind of just tuned in real quick. And there's some funny moments in here and there. And so and I, my wife was actually outright laughing on some of them. So. You know, I'm going to check it out and because we only saw a little bit of it and because my daughter didn't get to see it because she was at my mother-in-law's. It's not on DVD. And it's cheap. It's only like six ninety nine <laughs> as well. So it's on sale. You don't sale. want to spend any money? Yeah, go get Trolls. Go check it out. Trolls Holiday Special. And another great Blu-ray that caught my attention was the Defiant Ones. It was a documentary. Uh, with oh, they, they released Dr. that on Drake. DVD? Yeah. I watched oh, that a lot. Okay. Did you watch I it? I didn't watch it. I did not oh, watch man. it. So I, was, saw, I was waiting Talk for a little bit about it. it. That's amazing. If you're a fan of Dr. Dre, yeah. and if just like, I'm actually, Dr. Dre is one of my heroes. Same. And it's not just because of, oh, you know, the Chronic or Chronic 2001 yeah. or all that stuff. But it's as a creative. Yeah. He was always about work before play. And as just like a creator and a person who can find talent and like just nurture talent. Yeah. That's beyond, you know, that's beyond like, oh, I'm trying to be hardcore and yeah. tough like that. Yeah. Seeing, um... From his own words, Dr. Dre, you know, talking about his uprising yeah. and through all of that and the and the Jimmy Iovine. It's that's, like basically Jimmy that's Iveen. what it is. Yeah, that's Jimmy what it is. Iveen and Dr. Dre. It's, it's seeing two people from two different sides um, of success uh, finally colliding and seeing what they make. Yeah. And that is so huge because no one would ever imagine Jimmy Iovine and Dr. Dre coming together. Yeah. It's like, you know, this... But but they when they do that's where the the magic hits. But it's really cool. It's, you know, it's a four part documentary series. Yeah. Um. I'm, I'm, I forget what what episode where they actually like come together. Uh -huh. But it's so crazy to be like, oh, it's almost talking about the East and the West. Yeah. Because Iveen yeah. was on one side and yeah. the other, and Iveen was working with like Pop Acts and yeah. like you know like Stevie Nicks and stuff like that. And you Definitely. know then the Dr. Dre is like making you know like uh what's the Worldwide Wrecking Crew that yeah. so the greatest albums of all time yeah. yes yeah. and it, it's it's really cool it's really cool to see their influence and mm -hmm. it's really cool i don't know i just love i love stories like that because like you know you can look i'm a dr dre fan as opposed to like a jay-z or yeah, a puff daddy gotcha. or whatever they sean puff whatever you want <laughs> whatever you want to keep changing his name what are the 14 names <laughs> of yeah. yeah uh dr dre to me i don't know his his music has always felt more honest yeah and you know, because it's, yeah, he was able to capitalize on certain things, but he, he was also a storyteller. Yes. And to me, that was really great because he was able to tell stories. People thought like, oh, it's gangster rap, but he was telling stories of what's happening in front of him. Yeah. So, yeah, it was gangster gangster rap because that's NWA. That's the shit that was happening to yeah. him. Yeah. And, you know, there's this crazy idea of like when you mix that up with, with Jimmy, I, Jimmy Iovine. Now it's not musicians. Now it's like entrepreneurs. Yeah. It's like how do we take this to the next level? And seeing that, and the way the the way the documentary is produced is like amazing too. Oh yeah. What really grabbed me, what what I really connected to is like the, one of the first shots you see of, of the documentary is like a uh, a push in on Dr. Dre listening to Nirvana like out in Hawaii. That's so like you just hear him like just like slamming. You think yeah. like like I think it comes in silent and you just see him like bobbing his head. That's cool. And then all of a sudden you hear it and it's like Nirvana. Yeah. And then he goes like, man, that's my favorite rock band right there. That's you would cool. never expect that angle. You'd think yeah. he'd be listening to something like yeah. harder, but like, yeah. that's how you intro. It's like he finds inspirations from oh, other yeah. things. So it's cool for people who don't know that's the pathway. So. I love it. I saw snippets of it here and there. It was mainly the parts that we're talking like about Eminem, how they found Eminem. So getting all these backstories of just these artists that I love. Yeah. I mean, it if, was a great to see. If, if you've seen like Straight Out Compton. I can't wait to see it all. Did you see Straight Out Compton? Yes. Did you see Straight Out Yes, yeah, great film. Now they might. Uh, for the Dr. Dre side, they might retread a little bit yeah. because it's, you know, that's based on his oh, life. They, so they, also, like, <laughs> they also really watered the crap yeah. out of that yeah. movie. On purpose, but like they watered that down. Yeah. But, but it's really cool because and this one you get to actually see like real footage from Oh yeah, back there. and that's what I loved about And there's, there's you know, there's nudity and stuff all over that. So it's what it is. It's real life. It, it's real life. But it, it, that's what's really cool about it too is because you get to see Dr. Dre in, in the riots. You get to see him yeah. reacting to like, you know, like it's weird because like all these good things were happening to Dr. Dre. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, like, he's like, and then the motherfucking Suge Knight had to come in oh, again. Oh, Suge Knight, oh, man. Because, you know, like, Suge Knight, yeah. he, like, he killed another person outside the set of uh, Straight Out Compton. Yeah. And, like, 
you know, like every Dr. Dre thought everything was good, and then yeah. he's like, man, none of this stuff. Like he just won't, he just won't leave. You know, yeah. so I love that stuff. So I, I can't wait to check this Blu-ray out. But it's it's cool to yeah. see. You know, it's good to see them both because Jimmy yeah. Iovine. I don't know if you ever like. Oh yeah, up, I'm Jimmy aware of Jimmy Iovine. Is that's that's mm-hmm. another guy that's like, you know, another ins- not uh, yeah inspiration or hero because yeah. just his work ethic. It's like yeah. two guys who just really know how to work. Legends in music. Yeah, yeah. but also just in marketing and, uh, and yeah, too. finding yeah. talent. Yeah, it's like you're like we need to find the best talent. So we found Heather. You know, Heather's like our Eminem and Easy E. <laughs> Rolling down the street in my house. It's the HVH in the house. Is. No, but like you got <laughs> Yeah, so I'm excited. I can't wait to check it out. I didn't know that was coming out. So you really recommend it? I would say yes, yeah, definitely. I can't definitely. wait to check it out. I saw it come out. I was like, oh shit. Because I only saw snippets, and so I'm excited that it's fully out now. Yeah. So definitely going to cop that and check that out. Uh, video gaming, again, you know, it's, it's a lot, not a lot of stuff coming out. The Doom um, virtual reality for your PS4, if you have one of those cool uh, PS4 virtual reality things, that's kind of cool because I'm a big fan of Doom because, you know, that's really first person. You have the virtual reality? I don't have that aspect of it, (laughs) no. But that looks cool. Resident Evil Revelations on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, That drop, I'm a big Resident Evil fan, so you may want to check that out. And for you Black Mirror fans, they have a Black Mirror video game on your Xbox and PS4. What? I'm not a. I, a lot of people talk about Black Mirror. You're not really. I didn't know it was a game. What was the game? I don't know. <laughs> they made a do? game out of it. When I saw that, I was like, oh, because I know uh, the people have mentioned it on the show. I don't know what you. You never heard of Black Mirror? It's like a BBC show, I think. No, but I don't know what the game would be. <laughs> I guess you relive some of the well, you, stories in it. Like, are you, are you, do you watch that show? No. The show? Black Mirror. I've seen a few episodes. I haven't seen okay. all of them. Is, is it like, are we going back to the 90s where every TV show and every movie has to have a game that goes along with I, it? I, yeah. When I noticed Florida? that too, I was like, it, to me it felt weird too because I'm not, I know people are fans of Black Mirror, but I don't know if it, that's like having a video game to have. That's like having involved. Twilight Zone the game. It's like, well, what are you supposed to like? Was it, there was a Twilight Zone the yeah, game. Yeah, but like, yeah. what are you, you're supposed, to, you're supposed to go through a bad day. <laughs> you know what I mean? Really they decided to drop it, man. So I don't know. Tell us in your thoughts if you're if you're picking it up, if you're excited about it. I'm. We'd like to know because we don't understand. Um, we so just don't know. Sega just CD, don't man. Know. Sega CD. If you're hungry as a gamer and you were looking for a game, those are your games this week. Uh, before we get to what's new in theaters, you brought it up. Justice League. You he guys did, weren't he here. He did. I, I, you didn't see it yet. You haven't I seen, seen it? it yet. Well, how am I supposed oh. to talk about it now? Oh. Would it be bad if he spoiled you? I have spoiler. been. Or have There's you been no spoiled? such thing as spoilers. Oh my god! <laughs> been reading DC comics since I was four. <laughs> Wait, should I sell you on the movie, or are you already gonna watch it? I, I am already. I mean, you, I'm see sure it. you've already heard the opinions. The Rotten Tomatoes. I've, 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 I don't care. I, I mean, I love Rotten Tomatoes. It's a, it's a great company, um, and it's really it's really good to monitor with. Yeah. I don't believe that. I do not believe that the average person should be someone that is should be rating something because it's just unfair yeah. it is um, it's it's completely unfair and what's even worse is that they had uh, i don't know if you saw last year where they um actually talked about how disney was paying rotten tomatoes oh yeah yeah that's it's, not cool you i sort of pay, felt that i sort of felt that you could pay a dollar to anybody you someone comes up and asks me and gives me 150 bucks to say something Right now, I'm not going to say no to that. Yeah. What? So, okay. Say what? I, I have, What's the line? I was in the ICU, so I'm going to take whatever I can oh, yeah. at the moment. But it's, it's, I'm not saying that it was real or not. It's just it's, it's one of those words. I don't like looking at Rotten Tomatoes from a person-to-person perspective. Yeah. But when I was looking at I had a whole bunch of friends who were um, that are one Marvel fans, and they were like, already, I don't want to watch this. I don't yeah. want to see it. Then they went, and they were like, you know what? We actually had a lot of fun. Now... They also were expecting crap. They did say they not. It wasn't. They're like it's not going to be the best movie of the year. Yeah. But they're like, you know what? We went. We had fun. Like yeah. that's and it, it, they liked it. That was pretty much my review. It wasn't great. It wasn't bad. It was okay. It was good. You know that's better than many of the <laughs> DC. Yeah. Fan reviews. So. But at the end of the day, like when we're saying, I wish there was more. Like when we're saying it's great or this bad, in a way that's like we have we'd have to compare it to something. Yeah. And like if we don't have to compare this movie, if we're just getting our reaction after we left, yeah. When I, you know, I saw an IMAX, of course. Of course. <laughs> We've heard him say that before. That's and like, how he sees these movies. And when I when I uh, when I left, and I got that free poster that they give every single opening night. Oh, you got the poster. I got the poster. the poster. I was like, damn, I had a freaking good time. Actually, in the middle of the movie, I was like watching it. I was like, 
Holy crap, am I becoming a fan of, <laughs> of, uh, of, uh, what's, what's the black dude? I forgot his name. Oh, Ray Fisher. No, or, or, I mean, but the character. Cyborg. Cyborg. Yes, am I becoming a fan of Cyborg? Cyborg was pretty good. I was happy about Cyborg. You know what's amazing about IMAX? It's like, for some reason, the fact that it's like so big and so annihilating your senses, like, it just removes all critique at that moment. You're like, <laughs> I, you're like I know this doesn't look like... I know this literally looks like a bad green screen, oh, see, but, he it's, was dead but it's bad so that, big in my face that it doesn't even matter. <laughs> you know? I have to say, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. The, it's, it opens with like this uh, cell phone footage of Superman. And if you know the stories, Henry but Cavill to had like a beard and everything. He had like full on. To, and they pay like $50 million to shave that off. Dude, imagine, CGI. imagine it was a so life, noticeable but, at the very listen, front of the movie. Yeah, but imagine a life in which we wouldn't bad. even have to like. But like, how great would it have been if we didn't know any story about that going in? Like, yeah, it still would have been noticeable. He would have like, dude, what happened to your lip? You I, got a pet. I almost, I was guaranteed like if we weren't so like lip. plugged in, if we weren't plugged in as much as we are, like we probably would have had like probably at least. At least two and a half times more fun. At least two and a half times. I don't know about three. Well, that, that's it's real life, and, I, and I'm going to say this to like Jurassic Park. Real life is ruining everything for us. I mean, scientists, stop finding out more things about dinosaurs. Just stop right now. It's <laughs> yep. I'm I'm done. You're screwing up with my you're screwing with my Velociraptors. <laughs> stop it. Well, they're giving robot sentience now, so you know. Well, it's uh... Terminator. <laughs> but I'll, I'll say like I left the movie. I had fun. You know what I mean? And you know what really sucked is that, like after I watched the movie and you know, I was like out at like midnight or something like that, okay. I really fought to go to Rotten Tomatoes or to be online uh -huh. to like hear anyone's thoughts yeah. because like at that moment I had a really good time and yeah. I know just like the moment, you know how hard it is in this day and age to go online and say like, damn, that movie was great because you know it's so easy to be like, no, it wasn't, it sucked. <laughs> this sucked, they spelled that word wrong. You know, <laughs> it's like it's so easy to be yeah. negative yeah, yeah. that like, Putting positivity is like really the most difficult thing. Like I, when I when I posted my feelings about that, yeah. I didn't really say like, "Oh, it's the greatest thing ever." Like literally saying I had fun. Uh, like, how do you really defeat that? True. You, someone true. can be like, "Well, I didn't have fun." I was like, "Well, that's that's yeah, your that's problem. that's just being a dick." <laughs> that's if your you problem, do something, dude. yeah, comment. It's that. like, well, I like ice cream. Doesn't mean you can't. So well, it's, it was the same with like um, uh, bat bees, uh, bat bees soup. I was. I walked out of that film. I expected it to be the worst movie on the planet. I walked out and I was like, guys, if you go in and you let the critics, like, if you just leave that at the door, if you expect it to be a bad movie, you're going to walk out of the movie having fun. I was yeah. like, I'm not going to say it's a good film. There is no part of me that says it's a good, but I I sat in the movie and I enjoyed it. I, I Here's the thing. It's like I I'm, just felt they did my Wonder Woman wrong. She deserved to be like more. She needed deserved more story. She just felt like a throw-in. That's what upset me. Well, she, she was supposed to be much less though. She was supposed uh, to be much less. Did she yeah. has her own movie? True. Her own <laughs> the best of the DC films. Did you watch? Did you watch Avengers and be like, man, I really wish I saw more Hawkeye or something like that? It's a team. Not it's like guy. the story is the team, not the individual. That's true. Well, I but, know, but but here's uh, the thing though: having fun. Like I grew up, I watched Hercules and Xena and. Yeah. And like a bunch of, but like that will never win. If we're if we're always looking for movies that will be like award winning, like we're never gonna be happy. Well, but there's there's also a difference. Like we don't have movies that are bad to be bad. We don't have B movies anymore. We don't have C movies anymore. Unless you're looking at horror. I mean, like at horror, if you, you have your you have your different levels. Yeah. But like we can't go in and have a Hercules or a Xena anymore because everyone ex just expects good quality. Yeah. No, sometimes you just want. Something good terrible. Yeah. Some good popcorn. But Hercules and Xena had that, like, when, when Hercules when, and Xena, when they just punched someone, it went, like, 50 feet in the air. You're like, okay, that's not really realistic. But that's sort of, you know, I get what, the, you know, like, you get it. Yeah. You get what they're trying. Like, I watch Ash vs. the Evil Dead. Like, yeah. a lot of that. If that was, was going to be good, you, I would have cried. I would have <laughs> been so upset. It was like, but, you know, like, sometimes you just get what they're trying to do. Yeah. Um, but, you know. Two directors, you had fun. What, what, do, you, what do you do? I'm, I'm glad y'all. I'm glad y'all aren't giving it terrible review. Like you're not. Yeah. And, and honestly, okay is better than several of the previous DC films. It's you know. I mean what? I mean I think I think you're gonna have fun. Yeah. Um, hopefully, because now you should me, have fun. Now me telling some you classic moments in there. If you're a DC <clears throat> fan that you got, which I think we we're, I was pleasantly surprised. But what, what sort of sucks is I feel like now me telling you that it's fun. 
Part, part of me feels like in your, in your head, you're gonna fight that. You're like, well, I didn't have as much as you, much fun as you, <laughs> you know, I, did. I literally, I literally will walk in. Um, my mother, she's the type of person that like, if a, if a critic says it, like it's in her head automatically. Yeah. Like me, I'm so because that that was so drilled into my head, and I didn't get to see a lot of movies that I wanted to see because of it. Um, I, or I would like have to sneak off and go see them. I literally, I will walk into those doors and I'll be like, nothing else matters. This, my, I go into every single movie expecting the best part of the film to be the trailers. Like, if as long as it is better than the trailers, I come out of that film happy. So, I, you don't worry. I, I will go in and have my own opinion. All right. Great. I think this is a great lead into what I have to say now. <laughs> what, for, what, because, what? again, there's not very many films coming out this week. Um, there's a lot of films that are on limited release. Um, so, this is, this is a great lead in. And one of the movies when I was checking out to give you guys the information that I was very shocked and surprised to see. There was a movie called Wolf Cop that Wolf came Cop. out not too long ago. And now this week in limited release, an, it's called Another Wolf Cop. That's the title. Two? It's not Wolf Cop 2, it's Another Wolf Cop. Well, like a total different one? <laughs> it's, it's, it's part two, but it's being called Another Wolf Cop. <laughs> it's about an alcoholic werewolf cop, Lou Guru, uh, who springs into action when an, an eccentric businessman with evil intentions seduces Woodhaven's residence with a new brewery and hockey team in this outrageous horror comedy sequel. Wait, so he seduces it, seduces people with beer? Uh, and a hockey team? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but the Imagine posters are like classic teams. 70s cheese. Yes. It's those like cool kind of, what do you call those kind of films? Grind, I wouldn't say Grindhouse, but it has it's like, not, it has that cool so kind of 70s cheese to it. Gotcha. With right? like, maybe a little bit of Grindhouse. Maybe you're talking about like just a classic D film. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's literally. It looks amazing. And I was like, I want to find it, but it's, I don't yeah. know if it's being released in our area. Sort of like the Troma Vision stuff. Like, yeah. yeah. You, you can you can it always check, like uh, AMC Indie does a whole bunch of that stuff. Yeah. You can or like the Mosaic. They have a lot of those really. I think you guys would take it. I think you guys kind of like follow the same things I do. So another Wolf Cop sounds really cool. Are you gonna see? And, it? Go see I want to find it. I'm gonna seek it out, and if I do, I'll let you know. But speaking all as well as on bad films, an uh, even bigger film that's coming out this week on uh, Friday is. Have you ever seen The Room? Yeah. Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> Wiseau. I'm not sure if I'm saying his name right. But there's this guy named Tommy Wiesau who do you know, you know the story about the room? Did you talk about the movie The Room? The movie The Room. With not not the room room. Oh, I think you're thinking you talk the about room, room. You talking about the room with Brie Larson? No. Oh, okay, wow. There is a very bad movie that's infamous for being so very bad, like, and like Cube? it starred this guy named Tommy Wiesau, and he was just like probably the world's worst actor, and he just they probably shot certain scenes that took over like. A 10 second scene probably took like 15 hours or whatever. And anyway, the new film coming out this weekend is called The Disaster Artist, starring James Franco. Now, 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 and it just looks I heard that's absolutely good, amazing. Man. I heard that movie's yeah. freaking insane. Yeah, The Disaster Artist. Because it's like the world's worst film. And Franco is perfect. So, it sounds like, it sounds like a really weird, like... It's a weird film. Like, I want to see the original, though, before I see this film, though. I so know. I can ask them to, you know, to relate it to, but... Marathon. Yeah. Do marathon. You haven't seen... I can't believe it. I, was, I thought you might have seen it. Well, I got, confused, I got confused. I know. You said room. Brie Larson, shout out to Brie Larson and The Room. Yes. Uh, AKA upcoming shout Captain out to Marvel. Brie Larson. She's a great, The Room is a great movie. Yeah. Um, and starring Brie Larson, but there was a film called The Room with Tommy Lee Sal. <laughs> that supposed to just room. Artist. <laughs> <laughs> and that looks crazy. And the Franco Brothers is behind I, it. It was, that's it. It seemed like a really weird, like riff tracks kind of. Like it was yeah. like riff tracks in film, um, which a, is, by the way, if you don't watch any riff tracks, <laughs> go watch riff tracks. Awesome. So yeah, I, I'm curious about it. I'm, I'm, uh, it, it looks interesting, um, but I think my favorite film coming out this weekend is Mike Mignola, uh, well Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro. What is that coming shape, out? The Shape of Water comes out com Friday, bro. Holy yes, yes. See that fucking movie, dude. <laughs> oh my god, I've been looking You're forward to that all year. I thought it comes out later. Yeah, for those unfamiliar, Are it's really? an, an otherworldly fairy tale. That's limited release, isn't no, it? No, I think it's a wide release. No way. The two biggest releases this week no is Disaster Artist and Shape of Water. No, no way. You're seeing that? No way. <laughs> We're going to buy tickets to that right now. So I'm going to tell you all about it. Shape of Water. It. Holy crap. Do you know that? Otherworldly yeah, fairy yeah. tale oh, yeah. set <laughs> against the backdrop of Cold War, Cold War era America circa 1962. 
in the hidden high security government laboratory where she works. Hold. Lonely Elisa, Sally, played by Sally Hawkins, is trapped in a life of isolation. Elsa's life is changed forever when she and co-worker Zelda, a.k.a. Octavia Spencer, who's an amazing actress, hidden figures, discovers a secret classified, classified experiment. Basically, it's a woman who falls in love with Oh, like it is a, December 1. Holy crap, how did I miss? I thought it was coming out Christmas time. <laughs> with this amazing sea creature character that kind of looks like, uh, what's the character in Hellboy? Abe. Abe, 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 Abe Sapien. I was, I was like, it kind of looks like Abe Sapien. One? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Everybody thought it was, like, continuating on from Hellboy, but it's its own film. Guillermo del Toro, who I wish yes. was back on the Hellboy franchise, but he's not, but that's okay. The entire team's gone. Guys, the entire team's gone. Stop asking. Yeah. <laughs> but then, I, David Harbour, if you've seen the new, because he's playing the new Hellboy. <laughs> my, 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 I love, I love Mr. Ron Perlman. I'm, I'm I with you. Got it. He, those original pictures of, of David are like, of Harbour. Oh my God. Yeah. He's, he's, We're going to check it out. <laughs> my, my hopes are very high. So you're psyched about Shape of Water. That would have been my, one of my top three choices of the week. Was go see, <laughs> go see Shape of Water. Holy crap! I didn't know. That surprised me. I'm so excited. You can so buy tickets. I'm, I'm, my tickets should already be bought. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to the Alamo Draft House maybe because it's probably uh-huh. nine. It's probably nine nine minutes. But <laughs> no. Well, no, it, it won't be because uh, they have it's too many. Bad. They have to cut out on IMAX. By There's too many week. other big movies out there. Yeah, Justice League is right. taking. I don't, over I don't that. think Del Toro is gonna do. Uh, he didn't do IMAX. But Shape of Water looks dope. I'm going to see that the best theater yeah. I possibly can. Yeah. With a beer, apparently. <laughs> no. I mean, with pretzels. <laughs> pretzels. Good, great pretzels there. Yes. Shape of Water. See that. Go see that. Tell us what you think. Yeah. Has that chick from The Office in it? Sally, was, is that Sally Hawkins? <laughs> yeah, right? I don't know. Remember um, Mike's girlfriend? Michael's girlfriend? I really didn't watch The Office. I didn't like watch that. The Office. I had no idea. Did you, you watch the UK version? That doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't matter. So, yeah, check those out. Some great films coming out. Um, other events this weekend. Um, you should be shopping here at Amazing Comic Shop. Shout out to Amazing again. Heather. Yeah. Um, this weekend is Star Wars Days at Woodbridge High School. Um, shout out to my friends with the um, 501st uh, Boy Scout Troop. They, yeah, they do the kids stuff. It's adorable. Check it out. So they're doing a Star so Wars cute. Day because they are the 501st Boy Scout Troop. They're doing a Star Wars Days. It's uh, both days, Saturday, Sunday, at Woodbridge High School. Got a lot of friends going to that. It's a family festival, con for all ages. And December 2nd, as well as on Saturday, Comics at McKay's. You'll see this brother and Carolyn Bolesky, his loved one. Uh, they'll be having their books. As well. Who is the other creator going to be there with you at McKay's? Uh, it's going to be Sean Casley and uh, the creator of The Ant. Yes. I always forget his name. Yeah, I forgot his name. He's a black guy. He's cool. Yes, he's a cool dude. I'm he's not really cool trying because to stop he's, by. he's not cool because he's black, but he's a cool guy and he's black. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Separate but the same. Yeah. All awesome. I might try and stop by to say hello, man. Cool. So McKay's, get yourself some cool we call, all ages we call books. That, we call that like mini con. Because it's just like three. Yeah, it's a cool <laughs> three, little mini con. And you're supporting a small business and you're supporting other businesses that are in the store with these creators. And they're all ages books. Get you some stocking stuffers, man. Comics at McKay's uh, this Saturday, as well as uh, later in the evening, um, I got an invite to this Krampus Knock DC. Krampus Knock, yeah. Uh, is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, it's. Uh, it's I've you, never been. I've, and I've, people's I've, like, you should come. It's. It's. I've never been, but it's supposed to be really fun. You actually, there's there's several different events for Chris, uh, Krampus Knock. It's literally celebrating Krampus. Um, you know that really big. Uh, <laughs> Keep, keep, sorry, people keep knocking on our door. It's really creepy. Because, yeah, while we're shooting because it's late. It's, um, <laughs> anyway, uh, so it's people literally celebrate Krampus and like because they're really bringing back the character. That, yeah. Um, and the whole theory that Krampus was actually the true um, gift giver. Yeah. And it's of course everyone likes creepy shit. But he's still so. scary looking as fuck. It's, I love him. Um, do you know that uh, really big? It's it's the really famous haunted house in in a, that's just north of Baltimore or it's in Annapolis or it's okay. it's the one where like that woman died or okay. she can't she came back. She didn't actually die. Wait, what? She died and came back? Yeah, she had, yeah. she, like, it's a woman that had a heart <laughs> it's a movie attack. movie we can make. There we go. Uh, she had a heart attack. Like, it's a really cool haunted house. Um, but they have a Krampus event, yeah. actually, that goes all month, and it starts with Krampus Knock. Um, and it's, it's really cool. If you're invited to a Krampus Knock party, go. They are so much fun. They're, like, okay. the opposite of, hall- of Christmas parties. They're just... Yeah, my friend sent me the the link. It was a Facebook event to the, this Krampus Knock. DC. Apparently, it's the biggest Krampus Knock they do in D.C. I, I, and I was like, they see he was like, it's all ages. But and I saw some pictures of you. They have like kids events, but then there's a later in the evening, twenty one and up party. You can, but get it, your photo with Krampus. It's yeah, Santa. it's so much cooler. 
color. It looks cool. I was like, I don't know, because my wife is a scaredy cat too, and she doesn't like the look of Krampus. Um, <laughs> then, then don't go to the one in uh, in uh, Maryland because in Maryland uh, that haunted house they they change the house to be all Christmassy yeah. and then at the end it's like a creepy Krampus that you get a picture with. Yeah, but, no, it's I like, would be down for that. I, 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 so I, I need to go with friends. Yes, so we need to go. What's the plan? You, plot you and something. my husband need to go, and I need to just I have to I was by the way I found this out if you have motion sickness like me you cannot go into the house but if you're nice they will let you go in at the end and take your picture. <laughs> Wait, what? Is the house moves? Hey, there's there's a they have a a, a ser- like a series of like windmills and stuff. So oh, I what? They, they actually have a very <laughs> large sign. Sounds dope. It's it's yeah. it sounds really cool and I wish I could go. But anyway, I'm have fun with that. Have fun. It's Christmas. Uh, Krampus Knox is supposed to be really fun. Okay, check it out if you're looking for something to do that Saturday night, as well as Saturday night. There's so much going on this Saturday, apparently. Um, my friend Anna uh, Maki Roll with uh, Maki's Chop Shop, she has a burlesque show uh, celebrating anime. It's called We A Booties, the bigger, better anime show. It's an anime burlesque show. Um, she's got a lot of great uh, burlesque people performing with her. It's going to be awesome. They're going to do like a shibari demonstration at like a midpoint in... I love Maki. I was the officiant of her wedding. She's my, my home girl, and all of her performers are amazing. They're amazing dancers. It's going to be a fun show. I wish I could make it out. I'm not going to be unfortunately be there, but you should be there. So check out We Are Booties. <laughs> we Are Booties down here, please. Yeah, I'm gonna put it right below, and I'm gonna throw the picture up to the <laughs> thing. Um, so a lot of cool stuff, uh, events going on. Uh, before we sign off, uh, so many other quick notes of stuff we've seen. Um, I didn't see it yet, but I heard the Marvel Hulu, which if you have Hulu, let me borrow your account. Runaways is apparently super awesome. It's getting great ratings. It's it's supposed to be amazing. Uh, If you aren't reading the new comic, by the way, you definitely should. It's really good. Um, But it was getting amazing. Uh, The critics were talking about how great it was, like the three weeks into it, and it is not disappointing, apparently. You can. It's just like all the Netflix shows. You can binge all of it right now. It came out on the 20th, I think. Yeah. So it's if don't just don't say anything yet because I haven't seen it. I've not been here. So and I just want to send a shout out to David Newbold. He was the inker on the original Runaway series with Adrian Alfana and BKV. And I actually have a page from that original series. Awesome. Miko no Minoru's room um, had like all these like little stickers on there mm-hmm. on her door. Yeah. And uh, my boy David, because I was managing my talent, you know, uh, for Temple Studios. Shout out to Temple, my boy David. He gave us a shout out on one of the stickers. There's a Temple Studio sticker on that Aww. wall, and he gave me the original page. And he's, you know, first Temple Studios appearance in a Marvel comic book. Aww. And so I have that on my wall. But it's yeah, such it's a good. A, if, if you go go read the original series, read the yeah. new series. I mean, if you like saga, everyone does. It's it. It's a little bit of YA for those, but I think a lot of people also love YA, so check it out. It's 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 one of the YA books before YA became like super big, but it's Brian K. Vaughn, and if you uh, if. BKV. It's, you know Josh him. Reed did a run on it, too. Yeah. It's true. Yes, he did. Yeah. So check that out. Um, Punisher. I binged it. I don't think you had a chance yet. You didn't check it out, dude? No. I have to say, I'm not, <laughs> so I'm going to wait because I really want to hear their thoughts on it. Um, but I binged it uh, over the weekend. Probably my favorite of the Netflix Marvel stuff, man. Um, Luke Cage was like my top seed. And this now has taken over. There's a lot of stuff I could relate with as being a veteran and being uh, also being a contractor for the government and intel. It's just a lot of stuff. And there's that PTSD that was a heavy element throughout the entire series that I could completely relate with. And it hit me right here. It was right, good. Right, right in the, right in and the heart. And John Bernthal is fucking the Punisher, man. Let me tell you. John Bernthal, amazing job. Well casted. I think it was a great uh, series. I hope. Definitely want you guys to check it out. You should check it out. So that was awesome. Um, CW is doing a big uh, crossover event going on. I think the finale is this week, probably as of this shooting. Uh, Crisis on Earth X. Um, they had like a big invasion storyline with the Arrow, Supergirl. I, s- I saw that. I saw that. that. I didn't of, see that last year. Well, I saw the picture um, that uh, Melissa, Melissa posted of her with being a uh, what's it. Ultra Woman, no Ultra oh, Girl. Yeah, an alternate reality, yeah. like Nazi version it's, yeah, of their it's, characters. It's the Nazi version are it's battling like, them. You so. have to if if you are part of the if you're like me and you're part of like the huge like anti Nazi thing going on. Please know it's got nothing to do with that. It is just a specific storyline. Um, there was a a big thing on the internet about it. You you will watch it. It's it's nothing like Secret Empire or anything like that. Nothing it's, glamorizing. It, no, it's it's yeah. it's literally they invaded and they are it's. 
I haven't watched it yet, but I, I was reading a review actually just before the tape uh, the taping, and it was they they are there is some dark shit going on right now. Yeah, I've heard. I've heard. I've I've missed out a lot of this past season of Flash and Supergirl and um, the other one with all the other super superheroes. The other, Le- not the other one. Legends. Legends of Tomorrow. Legends of Tomorrow. Yeah. With the I don't I've fallen attention. off a little bit on that. So yeah, now there's this crossover. I'm like, I'm so far back. Um, Multiple Man. Speaking of Franco from Disaster Artist, um, did you hear that news? Playing, uh, he's been lobbying to be Multiple Man, Jamie Madrox. The Marvel. <laughs> he wants a Marvel role. I can I mean, see him he, as he, Madrox. Yeah, I can. Multiple I can, Man. I can see it. Let's let's. Let's, let's see it. Let's <laughs> talk about it later. <laughs> no, I said... I, Give him a mustache. He, 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 <laughs> let him wear the mustache. Um, I don't know how I feel. I would tell you what. I would rather have Franco be multiple men than Zachary Levi be Shazam. I'm sorry. Shazam. I still can't Shazam. see that. I, just, I know I he's going to try and bulk up. Captain Marvel, I can't Patrick. see him as... <laughs> the original There's Captain only one Marvel, Captain Marvel. Marvel. And that's Brie Larson. I see you, girl. It's different. It's <laughs> We're not going to get is, into the copyright. Clash, I know, right? That is Clash of Demon Head to me, sir. <laughs> he is the original. No, she is actually the new Captain Marvel. <laughs> um, so- oh, did you see the casting news? Uh, speaking of casting, is Jude Law as the original Marvel? <laughs> I did not see that yet. Oh! I do I, oh, I just surprised you. Yes. Jude Law, they... They cast him? Okay. He's right. going to be the original Marvel. I, I We're going to see, see him I can in see the him series. more as, as Marvel than I can as Franco as, as Multiple. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to get that in the next uh, Captain Marvel film. Okay, that's that, that's cool. We'll see. I, uh, I don't know if you saw that uh, Larson actually made her first images. She's, she is on set. She, so with she the, her in the costume? No, they oh. showed her. They showed her she I haven't is, seen that yet. She's been celebrating with the cast and crew on Infinity War, though. So, okay. so we're probably... Oh, we're going to see an appearance. We might see an appearance. That's, that was an interesting little tidbit. I don't know if that's you saw the all the point, pictures. Man. That's the but whole they, point. They have a whole bunch of pictures of her with, like, all of the other ladies, and then they have a couple pictures. Of oh, her the on Vanity set. Fair spread. Well, no, no, not just on the va- yes, on the Vanity Fair. I just shared that on the page. They have a couple of others. Yeah. Um, but she's like on the set with them, and it's oh, like. So she will be in the film. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Maybe not even. I, everyone don't, should be don't in the film. Yeah. There's no, there's no point unless everyone's in this film. Every, everyone's gonna <laughs> die here, and that's when the new movie exactly. can, this, yeah. can start. Is, so that's why she's there. Which is yeah. also a sad story too. I posted these on our Facebook why is it sad? page because it's. What the were you contracts doing? are coming what to were you an end for a lot of them. Can you imagine that? Ten years, man. Ten True. years. Ten years. I don't know, but I, you kind of still want to see these characters. I, I want to see Chris yeah, Evans you, still be you, kind of here and there. The, the thing is, is that their contracts for these characters have come to an end. Robert Downey Jr. has made it very clear that he might or might not be going anywhere. So it's it's one of those where it's like, he might not be Iron Man anymore, but who said he wasn't Tony Stark? Who said that Tony Stark won't make an appearance? It's True. more, this cap... This tone, this Iron Man, they are going away. How? That's a different story. I, yeah. I just hope everyone dies and they just start all. This. <laughs> well, they are killing a lot of people, and that's they what I'm, I'm worried people. about. I, no, I, what I was reading. I want people to die. <laughs> I do want people to die because it gives Thanos oomph. It uh, yeah, gives the next gen some weight. Because apparently, they like uh, the, the article I read is like there's pre Avengers four and there's basically four like and B- after B C yeah. eighty. Yeah. Okay. We'll huh? see. We'll see. Come on, man. It's a little sad. Yeah. Right. Let, let it go. It wasn't as good as you thought you it was. You start singing, I will punch you. <laughs> Anything else going on with you guys? Anything else we want to add before we sign off? I mean, I can't talk about it. I know. He keeps teasing but us. But 2018. Coming up. <laughs> so, so sad. We only have three more. Sh- oh, and we're looking at the calendar. There's only going to be three more shows of, of the year for this that we're going to shoot. Looking at the calendar. Because we shoot, you know, every Tuesday. And we're going into the last month. We're in the last uh, shoot date for November. We're going to shoot three more times in December, and then it'll be 2018, and we're going to do something different with the show, and this goes, so a lot of excitement, I want to say there and plug, probably going to start a new, another channel that's more adult-oriented, or another show, adult-oriented, which we'll like talk the, about going to be the before. Yeah, the, so the, the there's going to be changes to NRW, but some cool stuff happening. Some, but definitely, people are going to die. That's all we want. A know. lot of death. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're so not going to no, no. We're going to kill them off so fast. But we got fun stuff planned, and Heather and I have been talking about doing a lot of different things, and so cool stuff, and hey, we're going to give it to you. Let's tell them where they can keep us, track of us, 
Uh, amazing Comic Shop, Painted Visions. Uh, yeah, it's um, it's uh, amazing, amazing Comics VA and uh, Painted Visions V V N S. I'm sorry. Uh, those are the two accounts for the stores that I monitor. You can also follow me at uh, Following Films. Um, I talk about movies and comics, and right now there's going to be a lot of pictures from London. Oh lots yeah, of, lots of Harry Potter. From photos. London. You know what? Hold London. on. I'm going to throw up this picture real quick. You're looking at it right now. Do you see the head on the picture? Apparently. I, Go I, ahead, Heather. I I. I so I found this super cute little grave site in literally in the middle of nowhere and it's like pitch black and I swear to flipping whatever's up there, there is a ghost. I swear to gosh. I actually got two pictures of potential ghosts. Let us know in the comments below if you saw the head on this picture. Do you see the face? She's Do you want to know? Oh, it was supposed to be a head? There's a girl. I thought I was supposed to look, I was looking for something else. I thought like a whole body or something like No, that. no, it's just her face. Oh. Because you, have you ever watched those like ghost <laughs> Japanese ghost uh, ghost shows? Like where like they, they it has like a whole crowd, right? It's like a game show, but oh. they show clips of like you're supposed to spot where the ghost is in the photo. No. So they like they have a they do a wide shot of the photo, and then they do a close up where the ghost is, and then the crowd's like, oh, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> So it looks I gotta like check that out. so it looked like uh, like if we were to take a still photo of us, yeah. and then all of a sudden like it'd be a close up and like right here like in between us is like a, a ghost just appears and they do like a close up. Is it like that? No, 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 no. But that's I awesome. wish it was. <laughs> it was. It's literally just this, <laughs> this, well, again, this graveyard was like super cute, but it was like we, my husband and I were walking through like this little patch, and my husband literally like turns his flashlight and he's like, oh. And it's literally this like little grave site. It's London was wonderful. There's gonna be primarily Harry Potter photos, but I did find a ghost. I right. did. I Let us know if you saw it in this yeah. picture. Let us know if you find your your own <laughs> ghost too. Joe, tell him what's going on with you, bro. Well, besides comics at McKay's this Saturday, check him out. Buy a book. As as usual, yeah, I'm writing com <laughs> <laughs> writing comics. You know, working working making films. Uh, I'm, me? I'm, I'm of Soon. course, I'm of course of that notion that I'm not going to promote anything or just say exactly what Top it is clause. until it's done. Yeah. But I can tell you 2008 or maybe it's the end of 2008 or 2018, <laughs> 2008, that work is already shown. Yeah. That's, that stuff's already winning awards, <laughs> but of course, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to jinx it, but yeah, we're working on stuff. We're writing things are on paper and things are I didn't moving. get the script yet though, bro. Patrick. Why would you get us? <laughs> he, we're just gonna. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I'm gonna get him on set and be like, "All right, just do what you want to do, man. Do what you want to do, improv, Patrick. Improv, improv, improv it up. I'm gonna do it Judd Apatow style. <laughs> Apatow, Apatow, So a stray productions. A stray productions. JoeCarabeo.com. JoeCarabeo.com. At a stray J. Yes, at a stray J. <laughs> <laughs> just Google me. But we are working on stuff. We're working on stuff for festivals. We're working on stuff for television. We're working on stuff for We gotta music. do the thing for Awesome Con, man. Hmm? You're doing a whole little film festival. We need to do... I want... See, but I didn't get my script yet. Shh. Shh. <laughs> I right, guys. Get some money. Hey. Go, go walk off. <laughs> <laughs> you can follow me. Uh, Facebook. Uh, Patrick Strange... Is it Patrick is Strange at Cosplay for my cosplay shenanigans. Costla for all the things I do with my charity group and cosplay. Uh, New Release Wednesday, that's us at the NRW and uh, at Strange since 1977, because I've been strange since then. And uh, at Temple Far East, that's me, PatrickStrange.com. We appreciate y'all. Remember to like, share, subscribe, and we need to do a contest. I'm telling you guys, we want more subscribers. We need to show that love because we want sponsors. We got a lot of cool stuff that we're planning for 2018. Come on, hook it up. All right? Let us know. If y'all want us to wear your stuff, we'll wear it. He's ready. She's ready. I'm ready. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Boom. Best show ever. <laughs>